Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Ailey Cohen and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about a study that was just um, revealed this week um, on phthalates, which is a, a group of synthetic compounds in literally tens of thousands of products. And what that study said, which was so interesting and made um, a lot of media noise uh, this week. So essentially what happened was researchers, my colleagues, Dr. Leonardo Trisande um, and his colleagues put together a study where they looked back retrospectively at data from 2001 to 2010, and they looked at over 5,000 adults um, and looked at what was measured for phthalate levels in their urine during this time period from 2001 to 2010 in this age group, 55 to age 64. And what they found was that the higher levels of phthalates in their urine correlated with increasing risk for disease and effectively looked at the fact that there was 100,000 um, premature deaths a year among people in those age groups, according to their data. And what this means is when they controlled for all of these other factors, um, including nutrition and sedentary lifestyle and other causes um, of potentially harmful early deaths, such as even BPA and other chemicals, they came up with very solid evidence showing that exposures to phthalates, this group um, of very pervasive ubiquitous chemicals in all of our products, actually contributes to early uh, or premature death. And what this means and what this translates into is really economic uh, productivity, because when you take 100,000 people um, from early death out of the workforce, you're also affecting um, our economic um, uh, strength uh, in this country. So it tied not only the health effects that we now uh, know about phthalates, and I'll talk about, also with the economic um, consequences of having these products and getting these chemicals from these products, uh, such as phthalates, into our, our body. So what I wanna first say is that phthalates are a group of chemicals known as endocrine disruptors. Um, they've been well studied internationally. Um, we know that the World Health Organization did a report on endocrine disruption in 2012. The Academy of, Ameri uh, of uh, Academy of Pediatrics, um, the American Academy of Obstetricians, Gynecologists, the Endocrine Society all have position papers on endocrine disrupting chemicals. These are chemicals, and phthalates are included, um, are associated um, and found to uh, disrupt the normal workings of hormones signaling in the human body. Um, and that's really quite important because we need our hormones for a variety of phys physiologic uh, events, including fertility, including managing sugar with insulin and, and making sure that we're not insulin resistant um, and move on to diabetes, certainly obesity, <coughs> excuse me, and the effects on adipocytes, which are fat cells, all affected by these hormones, and of course these endocrine disruptors, and also hormone sensitive cancers. Um, are uh, associated with higher exposures to these endocrine disrupting chemicals. So those are endocrine, I'm uh, sorry, endometrial cancer, uterine cancer, thyroid cancer, which is an endocrine gland, um, and uh, prostate cancer, and so on. So I wanna talk about how we can try to reduce some of these chemicals in our environment so that they don't end up in us and in our children and in our, in our pets. So I did this without labels. I wanted to just teach how to, how to do this without um, overwhelming people with any endorsements or branding um, because companies change formulations all the time, um, hopefully for the better. Um, but let's start really briefly and go quickly through this. Um, so phthalates are a group of chemicals that make plastic softer. Uh, bisphenol A or BPA, many of you have heard, were taken out of baby bottles. Uh, that was taken out of baby bottles in 2012 because its endocrine effects that's another chemical, um, but BPA is also in our products as well, but that makes plastics hard. So phthalates usually make plastics soft, bendable, flexible, pliable, um, which means that it has lots of different purposes. And of course, we're all taking advantage of those with a lot of um, interesting products that we like. Um, but I wanna teach something about food packaging. First of all, phthalates are often used in food packaging. Um, which is hard to avoid now, but if you can look for any products that are in glass um, and sold in glass, I have some examples here. If you're buying products with plastic, you want to see that they have what's called a plastic resin code or recycling code that's either a one, a two, or a five, or a four. So one, two, four, and five are, are pretty uh, reasonable in terms of food packaging material. Um, 
Number three is polyvinyl chloride, which phthalates contributes to or basically are made up of. Um, so polyvinyl chloride or anything with vinyl, you want to kind of stay clear of. And typically that's the three in the triangle. Also, you want to try to stay clear of um, polystyrene, which is the triangle with six. And then the triangle with seven, uh, which is other, often has BPA or bisphenol A. Okay, so you want to stay clear of three, six, and seven whenever possible. And so as I show here, um, these, this one particularly has a one triangle, that's good. Um, and you know, this one as well had one. I've seen a lot of fours this morning when I was looking in my cabinet. And so you really want to just try to stay away from, from vinyl or PVC, which is the triangle with the three. I also want to tell people that phthalates, this compound, these compounds that were found to be so um, harmful to the human body, um, are also found in personal care products because phthalates maintain the aroma, the fragrance. So that a lot of products, any products that have fragrance or perfume that don't disclose um, any of those ingredients, uh, there can be up to 300 chemicals in the word fragrance or perfume on a label, but there's often phthalates as well. And that's because these compounds, being that they're sort of a plastic uh, matrix, can hold on to coloring in cosmetics and can hold on to uh, the smell, the fragrance in personal care products, in laundry detergents, in household cleaners. And so you wanna try to find products that are fragrance free um, whenever possible, okay? When it comes to Tupperware and plastic containers, you may wanna to try to find other storage vessels. And so I brought some of mine in. I have stainless steel bowls, uh, forks, knives, and spoons. I use porcelain, made in America um, uh, porcelain so that there's uh, reduced lead content usually. Um, I also use uh, containers to hold my tea and coffee that are um, in stainless steel or glass. And so you wanna to try to do that. You never wanna heat up hot uh, plastics to be hot um, through the dishwasher. Uh, or even through uh, microwaving to heat up food or drinks because in fact, when that material um, gets hot, and as you can see, this is now opaque, it used to be clear, um, the matrix is thin enough so that actually the chemicals get absorbed into the food and drinks that they're holding. So again, heating hot plastics is a no-no at the very least, but try to change over to other materials that don't leach um, these kind of chemicals or any chemicals because of the matrix that they're made with. I wanted to show something uh, that's interesting that I found in my own desk drawer, which is phthalate coated paper clips. Plastic coated paper clips often have um, phthalates, where if you were to choose the metal versions um, of clips, that also is very good for our kids because we use lots of paper clips. And so now I know better, and you can actually see the plastics. If you look sideways at the metal, you can see the plastic coating. Um, in terms of um, nail polishes, phthalates are added to make them not chip. Same with hairspray. Um, we don't want chipping hairspray. We don't want chipping nails. So often phthalates are added. So you can look for products uh, through ewg.org, uh, Skin Deep um, database, which is their database for personal care products. You can actually type in your products and see uh, where your products fit in and what the level of toxicity and the ingredients are. So that's a really good resource for personal care products as well. Um, feminine care products often have fragrance. Um, so look for products, again, without many of the toxic chemicals, especially as feminine care products, we put them inside our bodies. Our, you know, our young women are gonna be exposed to many of these chemicals for a lifetime. So that may be an opportunity to switch those up and go um, organic and much cleaner versions. Uh, when it comes to kids' toys, turns out in 2006, many of the um, you know, the more uh, toxic components, uh, phthalate types were taken out or restricted in the US. So that's been a while now, but of course we have hand down, hand me down toys. Um, even some of the ones that I brought in were from my kids getting them from other kids. So you wanna avoid hand me down toys, uh, plastic toys that you don't know exactly um, how long ago they were manufactured. Um, overseas plastics do not have any requirements to reduce those phthalates. So um, I often say, please avoid 99 cent stores, cheap plastics, um, and go with toys that are vetted and companies that make a real strong point to avoid these chemicals, especially as kids um, you know, do hand mouth behaviors and touch products and put them in their mouths, like these keychains and that kind of thing. You wanna avoid any toys that kids 
um, put in their mouths that aren't meant for that, but also have um, potentially uh, harmful chemicals in them as well. And the last thing I want to mention for back to school is that many of the binders uh, that kids are using today are made with vinyl. Um, same with shower curtains. So anytime you can avoid vinyl, which is that PVC phthalate laden type of material, you're always going to have a less risk of exposure into your body, especially if you're touching things and put uh, and then touching your mouth. So look for the triangles. As I mentioned, it's the plastics resins codes. I have that in my book, Non-Toxic, Guide to Living Healthy in a Chemical World. Um, and we talk about it in the book, um, but you can also just find that on the internet as well and move through those uh, one through seven uh, listings, okay? So I hope this is helpful and um, I really look forward to people commenting and letting us know if there was any questions but I really wish people will think very much more about what they put in on and around their bodies, particularly the things that we love every day. Simple switches, being empowered, um, you know, really reducing these exposures is only going to contribute to uh, longer, healthier lives. So with that, thank you very much and hope to talk to you soon. Be well.